Jonathan Fields and this is Good Life Project. My guest today is Scott Dinsmore, the founder of Live Your Legend and a whole bunch of other really fascinating products and services and experiences that are really going out into the world and helping people explore what they're about and what their human potential is. Awesome to be hanging out with you today. It's good to be here, Jonathan, man. So Thanks. Really, kind of like a really fun backstory. It ties <laughs> into the exact moment that we're hanging out and having this conversation. Yeah. So, it was literally probably like two years ago to the day. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was today. Right. So we're because we're in Portland right now filming this. You know, like it, on on the uh, the eve of World Domination <laughs> Summit, and um, and I'm in town, and a mutual friend of ours, your running partner, Leo yep. about uh, you know from Zen Habits in San Francisco, a buddy of yours is in town, and I'm a friend of Leo, and I get a call from Leo one day. He's like, Hey, I got a buddy of mine, Scott, is in town, and we're gonna go to the Chinese Garden, let's get some tea, come hang out. So we all went there and um, and hung out and had this epic lunch where we were just like we were jamming all sorts of ideas, and you had like this seed of an idea. In your head. <laughs> You're just kind of like, I, there's something I want to do. It's amorphous. It's kind of gray. I'm not sure what it is, but you know, like I have pieces of it, and we're just kind of tossing around ideas. Flash forward two years from there, you've built this stunning global community. Um, you know, like a website that with tremendous content and value with resources you built programs and services that are helping people sort of like really create a, a amazing assets and, and skill sets to be able to, to embrace life um, what an amazing two years for you it's been it's been a wild whirlwind I mean two years ago I'm, it's kind of embarrassing to think about the conversation we had, because I'm sure you've heard that from so many people, like, oh, I think I'm going to start this website. I have this idea. I want to make an impact or something like that. And I remember you were so like gracious, like, hey, let me know how I can help. And you probably, I'm guessing, didn't really think you were going to hear much from me after that or what. But Well, you know, it's interesting because, I mean, so I get approached by a lot of people for help, and it, which is awesome. I love it. To the extent that I can do it, it's great. But it's a lot of people. So, you know, and it's, it's interesting, too, because one of the things that you have gone out and created to help people is essentially a training program that tells people how to connect with other people. Right. And you know, so the approach to me was through Leo, mm. which gave you this sort of like, okay, he's a buddy of Leo's, he's cool, right. you know, and maybe he's, you know, he's legit, like he's gonna do something <laughs> with this. So we had, but it also, it became clear to me pretty quickly in the conversation that you were, you were asking the right questions. Mm. And that's something which is really unusual. You know, you're asking questions not just to, how do I make money? You know, not just how do I build a company, but it was more like how do I make a difference? Yeah. I mean, do you remember that? Oh, no, I, I do for sure because it wasn't, whereas I was just thinking about how to manifest it on the internet and use these new tools, it had been something I've been thinking about for a long time. I mean, for years I've been helping people really on the topic of finding what excites them and like kind of building a career around that. It started out by just people just wanted to have lunch with me and they knew I was really into it because I had a really bad job situation <laughs> way back, which I'm, everyone seems to have that kind of story right. in this world. We can probably talk about it, but um, more and more people asked for help and it got to the point where like 80% of the people I would sit down with for lunch would quit their job within like two months of, of sitting with them. And it was, and I was really proud so of it. 80% this, quit it, ratio. 80% quit rate was awesome, you know? I mean, that was, I really, that was like, I really got to stick my flag in the ground there. and. It wasn't because I had something magical. It was mainly asking people like, why are you doing what you're doing? And most would say, well, because I'm supposed to, right? I'm supposed to be doing this this thing because everyone says, I'm, you know, there's this whole success that you're supposed to follow, this whole thing you hear about. And, and so I've been doing it just in the like regular world, just one-on-one -on -one for a yeah. while. And, but then I probably three or six months, probably about three months before I met you, I met Leo and some of these other guys in San Francisco and it, it totally turned my perception of what's possible on its head. I mean, I met, like for instance, he has a family of what eight, and he supports with his website and his, right. his simple blog. You know, and I know you hear about. Oh, wait, he's a blogger, and he's married with six kids. Right in it's, San Francisco. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> really. Yeah, and he has this unbelievable lifestyle. Great person. I mean, you and I are both very close to him. But and there's a lot of other stories like that that I started to just be around on a pretty consistent basis. And when you do yeah. that, your thinking transforms. Because for a while. I knew nobody who did any of this type of alternative lifestyle type business that were really using their passions and talents and skills to help people in a meaningful way. And I didn't know you could really do that. And when I saw it so much, it changed my thinking. It, it, it turned it from like, how could I possibly do this to how could I possibly not? Mm -hmm. And so when I caught you live at that tea house, that was right when I had, had that realization and then the World Domination Summit was hitting and I was about to surround myself with, it, it was gonna be even more overwhelming. And right. so, the hundreds of people back then it was 500 that this year so you know, right so, but, yeah but that and that just transformed my belief of what was possible instead of 
thinking like, you know, maybe I could do this one day. It was like, how, you know, I, I have to. It's like, you, you can't not do it. And so I was so excited and to sit, sit with you and the other people that weekend, it took it to that new level and made it real. And, and then from there, I started to kind of, then you piece together like, okay, what does it actually mean to build something in the virtual world and, and have it connect in the real world? But that, it's, and no, you're always I, learning. <laughs> I love that. So what's interesting to me about this is that you're, and this is so fascinating to me, right? Because there, so many of us don't take action because we don't believe that what we want to do, like that dream in our head is possible, right? right? And it's like, we go along, I don't believe, I don't believe, I don't believe, I don't believe. And then, and, and people are always like, well, it takes time to develop the belief and you know, it take, you gotta build up and like you gotta do things to change your mind. And sometimes that's the process, but, but other times there's a moment that can literally flip a switch. You know, it's like the Roger Bannister moment. Yeah. Right? For forever, people believe you couldn't run a four minute mile. One guy does it. Yeah. And you know, like in the weeks and years after that, it, it, everybody's doing it, like it gets, it gets shattered. Yeah. Like, did human performance, did human potential change it? Were people's bodies automatically rewired because of that moment? No. Right. But you know, their belief system, their limiting belief that it's not possible changes. And just, it, it's amazing. So like you literally, you see one guy basically. You look at Leo, you, and then you meet another person, another person's like, and in the moment, like a flip is switched in your mind that says, wait, oh, this is possible. Yeah, it's possible and it's it's not just possible, but it's it's probable and it's likely if you learn about what, what the process was. It's not easy, none of this stuff is easy, right. but. And I don't think any of us would ever sell that, oh, it's like la-di-da. Yeah, right, that's the, that's the biggest myth, but it, What's exciting is that once you realize it can be done, I mean, if you don't think it can be done, you're never going to attempt it. You know, it's that four minute mile. It's like, it gives me chills because that's, it's the perfect analogy. And, and then when you see it, you, instead of finding reasons or excuses why you can't act, you find instead of just reasons why, more proof to, to back up your, your new beliefs. And then you can, you find, you know, different paths that people have walked at work and you kind of, you can find, you can find models and things like that with people. And, so in your mind, like, what is this thing back then, because I imagine it's changed a lot, but in, in your mind, like sitting here two years ago, what is this thing that you think you're gonna build? So I just, I mean, it goes back from, I mean, probably 10 years ago or so or more when, um, I remember my dad gave me a copy of What Colors Your Parachute by, uh, yeah. by Dick Bowles, who actually lives in our hometown. And we got to know him a little bit, and I remember reading that book, and I just had this realization that doing work that was really embodied who you were is a right if you do the work and you understand yourself and kind of go through the process to you know the hard kind of grueling self-discovery process to to make that happen and um it's something that a lot of people don't want to take the time to do and so i when i f first realized that i kind of put my thinking on a different level and so i kind of approached things differently going forward now of course i still once i actually lived in spain for about what a year after uh university and i kind of had a business out there and, and actually was like teaching businessmen English, English and things like that as a tour guide. And that can really brainwash your belief on what's possible as well because out there they prioritize things very differently. And that was one of my big aha moments. It was that these guys, okay, they prioritize happiness and community and family and just enjoyment over work and money. And so it's, you're talking about like European communities. European communities and specifically yeah. I was in Sevilla, Spain and right. it was just, it seemed like the epitome of it. And it was just so refreshing because you, in the, at least in U.S. and a lot of Western societies, you grow up thinking there's just only one route, and people kind of brainwash whatever that su success is supposed to be. And yeah. anyway, I came home with this big thought of like I'm going to do something different and meaningful. And of course, I listened to my old school mentors as soon as I got back, and, and I, I got the big job with a you know good training program at the Fortune 500 company and all that. And that's when I kind of had this this experience where I realized that was my job role was. Well, it was automated in almost all of our competitors, and it was just like literally monkey work. And so I, I quit after what seven, about seven months. And I, my goal was I want to find something I can screw up. That was like how I put it. I was so frustrated, you know. And it wasn't even like in a positive light. But that's when I went on this discovery process for myself, and eventually started um, having different, you know, coffee sessions and lunches where people started, you know, get the I got the quit rate up to eighty percent. But so the, when, I, when I saw people doing this online and saw how they could leverage these tools to, to just scale it from, you know, I could have, what, eight lunches in a week, well, seven, maybe, <laughs> but, um, or you double up, but now we can reach it you know, on a much, much bigger scale and be much more effective. So that's really what I wanted to build, is a community that showed people that it's not crazy to, to think that you can do things a little bit differently, that you can actually pursue a path that 
is enjoyable to you that you're good at and actually make an impact in a meaningful way. Because I think if you do something that matters to you, it's going to matter to the people around you. I mean, that's just how how things seem to work, you know, and that becomes contagious and that creates a ripple effect. So, and, but let's test that theory, okay? Yeah. So if you do something that matters to you, it's, it's going to matter to other people. Um, there are a lot of people who would be like, you know, I love to do something that really doesn't matter <laughs> to anybody else. You know, like, I love crocheting, you know, like, uh, you know, like miniature art out of cat hair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, and, and, and the response is like, that's just like, okay, there's no way. Like, you know, like that's just, it's interesting to me. I love doing it, but nobody's going to care outside of me. So yeah. I think I know how it answer, but I'm curious what your response is on it. Yeah, so I think there's, there's two types of response to that. One is that if you start out, let's say you were going to be totally selfish. Like, I want to do what I'm just, what I love spending my time on. That alone is going to cause you to treat the people around you a lot differently. I mean, if you spend your time doing work you're, you enjoy and it's fulfilling and using your strengths, talents, whatever, you're going to treat your wife differently at, at night and your kids, you know, and your server at lunch. And that ripples are going to treat the other people differently. So just on that level, even if the work you're doing doesn't specifically, let's say, teach someone to be a better person or something like that, indirectly, I think that the impact is very powerful. But I also think it turns out that most of us, when we unpack it enough, the things that we that embody who we are and that we enjoy doing and want to create a career around involve helping people in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I think that just, it, it, from all the different examples I've seen, however you shape it, it comes back to just moving the needle for somebody else in, in some different way. And so that was the, the vision I had. If we create a community where people feel like they're not crazy for thinking differently, but that it's normal, then they operate on this new level. And I see that as like live your legends and that, that movement's core purpose is one just to, to show you it's possible. And mm -hmm. So I call it brainwashing the impossible. The fastest way to do the things you don't think can be done is to hang around the people already doing them. And you, you do that enough, you don't even have to change your goals really. I mean, you will, but you don't need to because your standards come up. It's like the, um, the Jim Rohn quote, which is my, what I live by more than anything is you're the average of the five people you spend most time with. Yeah. And I don't true. care if you want to lose 50 pounds, you want to run a marathon or you want to you know, change jobs, it's, it's all the same. Yeah. But it, it goes both ways. No. It's a scary thing, you right. know? <laughs> no, exactly. I mean, if yeah. you're hanging around with five people that basically think that life is, you know, here to beat you down, then you're all going to be beaten down together. Right. Um, and again, like, the thing that, that's interesting, and we, we both, you know, it's part of our, both of our philosophy, is that um, this has nothing to do with things being handed to you. This has nothing to do with a sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. This has to do with clarity and work. Yeah. You know? it and, and it's funny because in the internet world that, you know, we both move in and out of on a regular basis. I see so much, hey, go do what you love and all this stuff and the world is just gonna give you what you want. And to a certain extent, there is, there's, a, there's a sense of alignment that, that really does support you in a certain way. But um, what I, the thing that always tr you know, troubles me is, is when I see people saying, just show up and be you and you know, people are gonna start handing over fistfuls of dollars rather than <laughs> do the work. Right. <laughs> you know, and sometimes, you know what? It might actually take you years to develop the skills and the craft and the resources and the relationship yeah. to, to create, like, to get to that place in your head where you see yourself. But, you know, it's not about, you know, it's not about ease. It's about, is it worth it? Yeah, is it worth it? And when you find it and you can feel it, it you don't often have to really find that motivation. And that's what's neat is, like, if you, if... If someone believes it's possible and they, they have the conviction, they really care about it, they'll sort things out usually. You can provide the tools in this framework as well, which we, you know, I think we all do in different ways, but you often don't need to because people just are pretty self-motivated for, right, for the right reasons. And the hard work thing is such a misnomer because that seems to be, at least in the old school online world, what sells, like you, what would get people excited, like you know, the kind of the quick money-making type thing. Now I think it's the total opposite. You see that what really connects with people is like, listen, don't sign up for this if you're not going to work your ass off and, yeah. and, and just put all the sweat equity into it. And the thing is, it's no fun anyway if, it, if, you didn't, if you didn't work for it and you didn't really build something meaningful, then it's, it's, you're not going to stay committed to it and you're probably going to jump to something else if some new interest comes up. So. And it's just, it, you don't experience it the same way. I mean, it's like, it's interesting. I think the internet has trained us to a certain extent. And not, not even making money on the internet, but just the speed at which we operate around the online world. Right. And that now that we're, we're appified on our iPhones and constantly connected, like, we have an expectation of instant in every part of our lives. Yeah. You know, like, we want to develop personally 
like that. We want to develop physically like that. We want our interests and our career paths to develop rapidly. We want things to just happen in the blink of an eye. And there are some things that, that connectivity and technology can really accelerate and make happen way faster. Right. But at the same time, they're like internal processes that it takes, I mean, there's a famous Ira Glass quote that I, I'll completely bastardize, but <laughs> he, he was talking about becoming really good at radio. And what he essentially said is, you know, like, what makes me different and what makes creative people who succeed different than everybody else is we start out with taste. You know, like, we have taste, which means yeah. in our heads, we know where it is. We can hear what we want to sound like. We can see what we want this thing to look like. If we're artists, we can see what we want to create. But the challenge, we can't create it yet. We don't have the craft yep. to actually take what's in our head, the taste, the sight, and, and put it through our bodies and our hands and make that the output that we're creating in the world. And the only way to get from taste to manifest taste is insane amounts of work and you know, like do it over and over and over and over. Like if you're in radio or video or an artist or painter in business, you know, like just keep creating over and over and over and over time and it takes years you know you start to close the gap between taste and and creative output right and then that frustration because you keep looking in the early days you're like oh this just isn't good it's not what I want it's not what I have in my head and most people bail early on because they see what they want where they want to go but they can't create it yet right and they want to do it now whereas like if you set the expectation like you know what to get to that level there are certain processes, there are certain neurological, like synaptic connections, and, like pathways that have to form that are going to take time and work and effort. And I've got, so in, in a way, the internet, I think, it enables so much, right. but it also creates an expectation that frustrates so many people. It, I mean, yeah, the, the overnight, the overnight expectation is a, is a total killer of just, of, I think, plans or ideas for a lot of people that get into it quickly, but... There's a couple things. I mean, one thing people miss with the internet is that it's not like the internet isn't the thing. It's just the tool that works really well to spread something out. What matters is you find a way that to really add value to the people around you, to the world. Now, the internet allows you to magnify it like crazy if you do it right. And yeah, it's not overnight, but it's also pretty wild how how quick it can be. I mean, two years, four years, five years, that's pretty damn fast. Not saying it's gonna happen like that, but no longer do you have to necessarily be in something for 20 years straight slogging out before you start to have some progress so it it's definitely not overnight but it's not doesn't have to be that long either yeah, and totally great and i think also what you can do along the way is you know you, as you're developing internal craft you can do, you can develop networks and channels and resources and relationships and and audiences and tribes in a fraction of the time that it used to take so that as when you get to that point where you're creating magic it's like boom, everything takes off. And since you have the tribe, you can better understand how to create magic for the tribes. Yeah. I mean, you can't really, it's impossible to create something of value if you don't work with somebody who needs help with it in right. the process. That's why these communities are so fantastic. You never really need to build something without knowing it's going to be really useful. Yeah. Unless you're lazy and you just want to sit in your four walls in your office and create something you think people will want. Um, but I think the thing about, you mentioned about um, you know, the hard work and the time and all that, what happens with a lot of people is and this you know, has happened to me a number of times as I've kind of gone through different kind of areas of thought and working on different projects, but you look at the people who've done really well and you see like, you could look at, let's say, you know, how you've built things up or let's say like Leo was in Habits or something or I mean in any best-selling author or whatever, people like to look at where they are now and they, then they think, oh yeah, I want, I want that. And it's like, right. well, if you're, you get into this topic of modeling, like in terms of how to you know, unpack what someone's done to get where they are. Well, it's not about what they're doing now. It's what did they do when no one knew who Jonathan Fields was, no one who knew who Leo Babato was or whoever this, these people are, when they're just slogging away, working their face off and, and doing work that most people would never be able to, to really stomach or want to stomach. But when you can see that, it, it takes your rose-colored glasses off. And, and that's why these surroundings become so powerful is that when you're around that stuff and you're not, you don't just see what's written in the book and what's talked yeah. about in just you know, the, the, the interview or the, the product, but it's like, no, I see, we talk over beers or wine or we go on a run together and I see, whoa, it was, it was that hard, you did this for those three or four years? Okay, now it's more realistic. Now I can adjust my expectations. Right. And you also know what works instead of just assuming it's gonna be this, this, this fast thing. And, and then um, you, you put those, those different people in your corner who've, who've done well like that, they'll also, of course, wanna help you 
along the way as you'll be, I mean, it's a, it's a win-win type of thing if you, if you find the right way to add the value to what they're doing too, even though um, sometimes it can feel like if you're talking with a guy who's been around it for a long time, I can't do anything for them. But I think there's always a way that you can add value to make that connection. And when you do, you can just, the, the realism becomes much more part of your life. You yeah, know? <laughs> I mean, it's so much fun to be able to actually play even the smallest role in helping somebody light a fire that yeah. turns into a blaze. Right. You know, it's like even like, and you never take credit for it because it's not you, but just to play some sort of like some role, you oh, know, yeah. whether it's a conversation, whether it's just like a moment of illumination, whatever it may be, like to see somebody, you know, who you are interested in and would love to see succeed, turn around and succeed. Right. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's a pretty awesome experience. It's part of the reason I do what I do. It's a big part of the reason you do it. You do and a lot of people that we know um, do it. Because, you know, um, I, and I'm curious also, I mean, you know, with, with your journey, and like we said, it's been a stunningly intense and short and successful <laughs> two years for you. And we're talking about, like, so you're talking about, like, look at all these other people and look at the struggles and all this. And so for you... Yeah. <laughs> right? Behind the scenes in the last two years. Because from the outside looking in, a lot of people are going to look at you and be like, the dude exploded onto the scene. Overnight success. He's built a huge community. He's built experiences and products that serve that community. He's making a great living doing it. He's serving a lot of people in an authentic, meaningful way. It seems like everything Scott does is just touched by gold. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, like, what's the behind the scenes for you? Like, what's the reality for you that people should see? Well, so, first of all, people will start maybe when they had first heard of, let's say, Scott Dinsmore, Live Your Legend, when I, when I first put that stake in the ground. But that was not step one. I mean, step one was four years before that when I hacked together a, a blog. I didn't even know it was a blog on Yahoo Site Builder. I, I read a book that said, oh, you could create a website without code. I don't know anything about code. I thought, let's experiment. I'm writing these articles about um, book reviews that I was reading a lot of personal development books, things like that. And literally for four years straight, I had the same, it was like 111 followers or something. And there were only three reading it. It was my now wife, Chelsea, my two, my, and my parents, my mother and father. And everyone else was just kind of doing me a favor, friends that had signed up. Zero growth, like literally. And it was very frustrating. I was about to shut it down. I mean, if you have, if you have no visible progress and no like, even really like response or like community to, to tell you like, oh yeah, keep going and keep doing this. And I didn't, I didn't know when to be in the space or anything like that. So it was very frustrating and dis disheartening in a lot of ways, but I loved the writing and I loved the few people I would sit with or that I'd written, a, written an idea down and because of that I'd have a better conversation with them. I, it was helping me and it was a powerful process. But you know, four years of it going no, nowhere is, is a little bit different than exploding on the scene. Okay, right. so you, and then, so the, those four years helped develop that in a lot of ways, helped develop my writing, my understanding, and that is when I decided, okay, I want to really refocus this. And I was actually about to, to shut it down. I was so frustrated, and it just wasn't a good use of my time. And like friends that didn't get it would be like, why are you spending all your time on this site that like no one looks at? And yeah. um, I don't spend a whole lot of time with them anymore. But <laughs> um, but then uh, I that's when I moved to San Francisco and also started to meet these people online that had these lifestyles and that's then we've already you know talked about what happened since then but that's where the 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 switch in my head just just flipped and instead of saying let's shut this down I said okay let's take this seriously I see a path here I see that it can be done now we can get to work in a really focused way whereas before it was just fumbling around but the fumbling is an important part of the process and you can do that you don't have to do that full time you know I did it on the side and just learning and messing around and I didn't even necessarily know it would turn into something, but I cared about it and I wanted to spend yeah. time on it. Yeah, so you were finding it's funny, like there, there's a window I call the thrash. <laughs> and it's like I've talked to so many entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs about this where they feel like they're fumbling and, and like they're just trying a million things and, and they don't, like it's not working and they don't feel like they're moving forward. And you know, like, and it's just like they're not cut out for this, yeah. you know? And there's, and there's this, um, there's uncertainty, like it's, it's, you know, is it ever gonna work? You know, like, is this the right thing for me, or is this just, you know, like, insanity? You know, like, should I hold or should I fold? Right. Um, you know, is that feeling in the pit of my stomach? Is that, is that that this really matters to me and I need to move into it? Or is that this is idiotic and I really need to shut it down and stop wasting time? These are, like, really tough questions that people struggle with, sometimes for months, sometimes for years. And it's, it's so uncomfortable very often that you just want to walk away. Yeah. You know, and it's and it's like, but it's this window where people just, they so don't want to be there, but it's, I don't know a single successful entrepreneur that hasn't moved through that, not only once, 
But every time you move into a new threshold, I know, you yeah. move through it again because you go into that place of uncertainty and you go back into the thrash because everything, all the systems and the rules that got you to where you are don't work anymore to right. get to the next place, which means you have to go into this place where you don't know how it's going to end again. Yeah. And it, again, it could take days, weeks, months, or years again to figure it all out. Um, as soon as you think you have it figured out, you know, okay, there's yeah. probably another dip coming and, and then it's going to hopefully come follow a growth phase or something like that. Kind of like the path to mastery that you hear about where it's yeah, like you have, exactly. you know, you have growth, you have a plateau and then you will frustrate a little dip and then it goes again. You have to have, I mean, if you have that, that faith and also the people around you to, to keep it, um, keep you on track. Cause I mean, if you try and build this stuff on your own, um, I'm not saying like actual partners, but whatever, even just like buddies you'll just, you'll go running with your tail between your legs. It's too intense. I mean, especially the path of like entrepreneurship and building something on your own. I mean, you know, as well as, as I do, as anybody that's built something, I mean, the swings, the emotional swings are nuts, you yeah. know? And they, I don't know if they ever go away. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, for mo like I said, for most, and it's not just entrepreneurs. I think for anybody who's on a creative path, yeah. for anybody who's on a craft, and this could be, you could be working a large organization. You could be like, you know, working on a, an innovation team in a, in a, a Fortune 100 company. Right. You know, but if you're on a path where part of what you feel like you're here to do is create something from nothing, you know, is to, is to bring into to life something that just didn't exist before you or make some sort of substantial change or improvement, yeah. you've got to go to that place. You know, and it's just so uncomfortable for so many people that we literally will shut down what we're here to do. We'll shut down our forward movement in our business, in our lives, in our relationships, because we don't want to spend time in the thrash figuring it out because it doesn't feel good. Rather than reframing that and saying, yeah, it sucks. It's, it doesn't feel good, but you know what? It's also, this is the necessary step to get to the next place. So like you approach it, I love this line from Ben Zander, like the, the conductor of the Boston Film Act, where he's like, you know, when I do something and it doesn't work out, he's like, you know, like normally in the past, it's like, ah, this sucks, blah, 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 yeah. like cursing, whatever it is. He's like, the reframe is, you look at that, you're like, how fascinating. Right. And I found, it's so funny, I heard him say that, I was in the audience one time for one of his epic keynotes. Oh, he's unbelievable. Mind blowing. And I was so inspired that literally from that moment forward, I find myself all the time when I'm in the thrash myself, and I'm thinking, what's next? How am I going to figure this out? And like something really didn't go the way I wanted it to go. And like, ah. then I, like I literally will stop myself and say, how fascinating. Yeah. You know? And yeah. then, okay, what's, what's this giving me? Like, what's the lesson here? What's the knowledge that I'm going to get from this? Yeah, like what pieces of the puzzle is it filling in? Like what positive right. constructive role can I play for me? It's not an easy reframe. No. And it's, I mean, it's a habit that has to be built yeah. over time. And you have to, I think by, it gets built by being proven that that it's true. I mean, that if you have things that go go poorly at first, especially in the beginning, you'll you want to throw your hands up. You're like, oh, this is ridiculous. Everything's out to get me. All this kind of things. You've got the victim mentality. But when you when you find reasons why the stuff has worked well, I mean, it, over time, it starts to be that that just bam, the habit is. As soon as it happens, okay, what I learn, awesome. Like, I'm not going to do that again. Cool. Like that right. that surprised me. But you do that and over time. That compounds in a pretty powerful way. Yeah, and I think I think it also it becomes a really powerful reframe for for fear and just anxiety, which which is yeah. really just it was what does Seth Godin say like anxiety is experiencing failure in advance or something like that. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like anticipatory failure. Um, yeah. But let's take a, I kind of I'm I'm curious about I want to take a bigger step back with you. Okay. Um, because I kind of you know I I know fairly intimately the last two years of your life and you know we've talked a number of times about you know the three four five years before that mm -hmm. I'm curious about like you know like Scott Dinsmore you know, like earlier in life <laughs> um, you know like where you came from what were you like what's Scott the kid all about <laughs> that's interesting so you're talking way back yeah <laughs> okay um, yeah I mean well Scott the kid was a lot of trouble actually <laughs> like I talk with my I'm very close with my parents and I like, I've had their some of my closest friends just have it. We have a great relationship. They've always encouraged, like, ask why not and, and, you know, pursue things that are interesting and that type of thing, which, I mean, has been, talk about starting with the right surroundings. That, you know, it's been very powerful. But in the beginning, I don't know how they put up with it. I mean, I was, like, the leader of, like, the tensions in school and, and not, like, for really bad stuff, but just, like, general just defiance and being kind of a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that was really all through, like, middle school. And then when I got to high school, something happened where... Um, I remember they sent me on an outward bound course when I was in, what, I finished eighth grade, and it was like a couple weeks in the wilderness. And I don't remember that being some aha moment, but I look back and that's the only thing I can recognize is like where I stopped being such a pain to my parents, really to every to everyone, and I started right. to actually take things seriously. But um, 
that was where it really started. I mean, I had a had a fun like. As far as I was concerned, fun, enjoyable upbringing. Now, if you ask them in the beginning, it was you know it was a, it was a challenge. I mean, they they wouldn't they never say it in a, in a bad way. They're fantastic, but that's what that's where it began. And then um, let's see. And then through went through uh, was it at Santa Barbara? Where, where, where did you actually grow up? When I grew up in San Francisco, or east of San Francisco, like thirty minutes in like a little suburb. Cool. Yeah, and then spent almost all my time there, and then moved to Santa Barbara for school, lived there for a little bit, and lived in Spain for a bit as well, um, which is where that, that big shift in thinking happened. Yeah. But, um, but I mean, anything specific about the childhood stuff, I'm happy to dig into, I don't know what well, you. Well, no, I mean, it's just, it's fascinating to me to sort of like see that some, uh, so often what you see is people who become really motivated, creative professionals, and entrepreneurs, um, are people who, who had fairly high levels of defiance, or like they were outliers as kids. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Like they weren't the kids who very often sat in the classroom and said, okay, yeah, they were where the teachers would look back and fondly remember them as model students. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whether it's academic performance or behavioral issues, right. something like that. And like it's, so I'm always curious, you know, with somebody um, who's like out there in the world doing big, powerful things and creating, you know, like communities and, and building things, um, you know, like was, was that a trait that, you know, was always there or was there some moment in time that just kind of like flipped? Well, <laughs> the defiance was there in different ways. And the defiance, I guess, is now bigger than, than ever in, I think, a more positive way. And that just always questioning, you know, why do people do the things, do the things they do? And why, do they, why does everyone think they need to do them that way? And, and, and always having, uh, you ask my, my wife and she'll kind of roll her eyes at this because she knows that no matter what, if something happens or if someone talks about some idea, I'm always thinking, what's the, what's the contrary? Like, what is the, the road less traveled? path to that, you know, and and generally that leads to, to positive, interesting, different results. Other times it can lead to frustrating conversations and things like that, you know. But, frustrating for you or for the well, other I, person? I, probably for the other person, you right. know. But, um, but that, from early on, just that um, that habit and just that that way of going about life of questioning things and just saying, well, wait, why are we supposed to do it this way? And a lot of times you hear, especially in like typical like school systems, like, well, because you're supposed to. And that word, like, because you're supposed to is just ingrained in my mind is just like that is the thing that that triggers me it's like if you say that to me it's like no way I absolutely i'm just not even gonna listen to what you say next you know because if you don't have like a real reason why for things then let's um we need to unpack that a bit more and make sure we're not wasting and spinning our tires on something yeah. you know um so yeah i mean it's and that 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 question i've asked that question to myself really since since the beginning i think having a, a father who's in entrepreneurship and and worked on you know building things and had his fair share of just like swings in intensity, you know, some I don't remember so well because right. I was, you know, pretty young. I was, I was older when he was in the throes of it, but. So, I mean, do you feel like that was actually something that really opened you to the notion of entrepreneurship? It, it certainly was, and, and not just entrepreneurship, but doing something that is meaningful to you and, and to the world and making some type of a difference. Because I don't think it necessarily is about being an entrepreneur. I mean, yeah. for a lot of us, um, that's the, the fun, most creative way to go about it, but. Um, most important to me and what we do certainly at, at Liberty Legend and the way I spend my time with people is just find something that embodies who you are. It's congruent with the person that you are and the things that you're good at and also with the things that you're not good at and make sure those things are all everything's aligned properly. That might be in a, a big company, um, but I think for more and more people it's it's a more off the beaten path type of thing. Maybe it's working with a few people, maybe it's working at a company of 10, maybe it's on your own. Um, so, but it, yeah, the, the idea of the kind of approaching a career as an entrepreneur, even if you're not the, I mean, the CEO of your own life, that's the thing. It's like you have this brand, your most important brand is you, right? And like, how are you going to, everything you do builds that brand in a positive or negative way. Mm -hmm. Now that might be in a company and that might cause you to get a promotion, manage more people, get a more, you know, right. meaningful project, whatever it is, or it's, um, but it's the ultimate job security, right? It's like being really harnessing and believing that you're in control of this brand and that you can build it how you want and having a vision for that that brand you um, it it's better than any type of idea of some like pension or some contract you have with an employer or whatever yeah. it is it because that that creates that resilience again yeah no i totally agree i'm curious also about your i want to go back to your time in spain oh yeah because um and you were talking about there's a very different value set in terms of i think what you were getting at but i want to actually unpack it a little bit is is how, and it's been my experience also, how it's not just Europe, but how almost all of the rest of the modern world that's not the United States, or mm -hmm. sort of like, you know, the US, Canada, um, defines success very differently than a lot of people in the US do, and it tends to really bring in a lot more lifestyle and family and relationships. Right, and yeah, it's the, it's the whole, that simple difference of you, you can live to work or you work to live, 
type of thing. And in Spain, it's like they do enough work to, to do the things they want to do. And granted, they don't have a, a ton of money and they're in one of the you know, poor countries in the EU and you know, don't do so well like that. But if you're out with them and you see the way they spend time with community and big community in the evenings and the afternoons, whatever, it, you, you see what that's about and you feel that. And, and that's, a, that's a very different experience than you see around here where it's just constantly the racing. And so that, and that, what's interesting about that definition of success is that in the US, most people don't even have, have never thought about that. Their definition of success, it's not, not only is it not their own, it's not anybody else's, it's the societal definition. And so it's like you, you're trying to appease some just like gray body of something out there that, that no one can actually get to the bottom of. You never get there anyway. And you notice the people that, that are climbing the ladder to, to nowhere, the ladder that's leaned up against the wrong wall. It's like you, no matter how well you do or hard to work, it, it, if, if it's just about the achievement thing, it's like, and the achievement of like the checking the boxes of the, of the money and the status and all that, it's, a, it's just kind of the road to nowhere. So that, um, but people don't stop to even think about that. And so that's where it came back to asking that, that one question when I'd sit with people for lunch, why are you doing what you're doing? It just, it caused them to think about, wait a second, I, I don't know. And if you ask why enough with anything, I feel like it really gets to the heart of, um, yeah. well, positive or, or silly decisions. No, I totally agree. So you got to know what my next question to you is. <laughs> Why? Why are you building what you're building? I mean, I really believe at, at Live Your Legend, we have a tagline that's changed the world by doing work you love. And I believe that if you focus your time on spending, well, at least your, your working hours. Now, for us, I feel like when you do work you love and it's passionate work, it ends up you know, embodying your whole life in, in terms of just the people you hang out with, the people you like to spend time with. It's, it's all kind of the same. But... Um, if you do work that you really care about doing, you're, you're gonna, one, impact people with, with your work in a positive way, whatever you, you know, create, but you're gonna you treat the world around you differently. And that's when you, those people, you have a positive impact. When I go down the street after this interview, you know, I'm, a, I'm gonna feel great about it. I, I love this conversation. I love talking about the stuff, the work that we're doing. I'm gonna share more smiles on the street. And as a result, there's gonna be more smiles shared with the people I share them with. I mean, it, all that stuff's contagious. Now that's on the small level. What about the conversation I have with someone tonight you know, or this weekend or, or throughout, you know, the, the rest of our just, the, the work we do, those have ripple effects. You know, it's just like you said, you like to be a part of somebody's story and then like be a part of, even some small part of lighting that fire. Well, if you do, like think of how contagious that is and how, how um, compounding that can be over time. You know, it's so much more of an impact than any one of us could have. So that's really the reason I think it, it could dramatically change the way that people interact in the world. I really believe that in my core. And, and what's funny though, is I feel like I had it all wrong for a while. I don't have it anywhere near figured out. And the more you figure it out, the more you realize you don't understand kind of the whole picture, but that's the whole fun of it. But the big thing I realized that at Live Your Legend at first, it was all about tools to find out what you're excited about, what you're passionate about and how to build a career around it. And like just the nuts and bolts, which is important. Now there's a lot of different tools out there. There's maybe thousands of books written on purpose and career. Right. Um, yet whenever someone tells me they hate their job, I say, well, have you ever read a book on maybe how to change it, like, oh, no, why, why would I, what do you mean? I'm like, there's a thousand at the bookstore, but they're not willing to do that work. Um, so I realized all the tools in the world don't matter if the people around you say that you're stupid for, for thinking differently, say that you're crazy for trying. And that's why this shift at really what my focus has changed, not just from the nuts and bolts tools, but just let's take it back to the foundation of the community and of the surroundings. And that's why that's been the, that's something I missed for a while. And that, that's the only reason I created what I did is because of you know, the people I met and the surroundings. And that's why um, that's been become a, a huge focus, I think, for the, the long-term focus, the bigger, more powerful thing um, yeah. is, is how do you teach people to surround themselves with the right folks? Because we like to think we can do it on our own. Yeah, you know? and, and we can't. And, and you know, we've, we've talked about this. You know, that's, that's, good life pro that's like one of the big awakenings for me very early on in this project also was that was that the sense of belonging and, and the community, like the like-minded community, um, yeah. curating that and and bringing that, you know, creating mechanisms to create that for people is more enabling than anything I've ever yeah. um, seen in my life. You know, knowledge is great, but like you said, there are a lot of different places to find the knowledge if you really want it. Mm -hmm. Finding people, like finding those people, finding that those dozen people, whatever it is, 100 people, the five people, the two people, that sit down with you and say, I'm on your team, I get you, I get what you're about, I get 
why you're doing what you're doing. And I'm not going to go along and necessarily just say, yeah, it's, it sounds wonderful, but I'm going to listen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at your lens and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to engage with you on a level where, I, you know, you may have to convince me and let's have real conversations. Right. But I'm here because I want to see you flourish. Right. That's so powerful and it is so missed in society today. It's such a big missing piece. So it's like, yeah, that's been a huge piece of what we're trying to build here. It's what you're trying to build. And increasingly, I think people are getting turned on to that as both a source of pain that they didn't know was the source of pain and yeah. also the source of possibility that they never experienced, that they didn't realize how empowering it can be. Yeah, they don't even know that it's their problem. They think that, oh, I, I'm, I'm overweight, I don't like my job, or whatever it is. Well, wait, that's not it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, like it's foundational. To know more. It's like, you don't necessarily need to know more. Right. Even if, like, let's say, I think the, the fastest way even to, like, if you have no idea what you're excited about, what you want to build a career around, just hang around inspiring people because it's different things are going to trigger and you're going to be able to take notes, write it down when you're inspired by someone. What is it about their life that you want? And over time you build this repository just by hanging around them. But what's, what's wild, and I'm sure you've experienced this on numerous levels, but when you bring those people together and let's say it's just like a big group that, you know, just are all part of, let's say your community through our Live Your Legend community, you bring them together in the same room. And I've seen where there's people just in tears and, yeah. and you, and the thing is they're not in tears because like, Let's say I'm on stage and I say something really clever or something like that. They're in tears because finally the people to the right and left understand them. They're in a place where people believe what they believe. And I took that for granted for a while because I've had that for a long time. I think you've had great surroundings for a long time. A lot of us have and we've curated that and cultivated that. But you realize most people, like for the first time in that, you know, when you bring those people together in the room, it might be for most of these people the first time they've ever felt that way, where they feel at home. And then the guard comes down and then all of a sudden you can be you. And, and when you allow someone to, to be themselves, it's like that, that's the magic. Not yes. only, I mean, not only will you have a fan for life of your community, but you'll, you'll dramatically change the foundation of what they're going to build and yeah, what their yeah. potential is of building, so. It is, it's amazing to see that process happen. Um, and it, maybe the most fun thing that I've been involved in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like it makes you want to do more of it and create more of it, so. And it's simple um, too, it, you know? It, it is. Um, so the name of this project is Good Life Project. So when I offer that term to you to live a good life, what comes up? Yeah, so Good Life Project. I mean, to live a good life, I think it's to, one, spend your time doing the things that you enjoy with the people that you enjoy and respect, the things that you're, you're good at and you really care about and making some type of an impact, an impact that you, you believe is moving the needle in some way. It's not necessarily have to be changing, you know, solving world hunger or something crazy and huge, but just to feel like your things will be different you know, because you've decided to, to be intentional about things. I think that's a, that's a very rewarding feeling. And you couple that with, with people who you really, you know, make you smile to be around. And I don't know, you can't, you can't go wrong, you know, because since you never get there, then, then, you know, you stop, hopefully stop worrying about it sometimes and and just have some fun. Cool. Awesome. Great conversation. Uh, It's been so much fun just getting to know you over the years and also yeah. you know, riding along to watch what you built and to see how many people you've impacted has been uh, just a lot of fun. Well, your fingerprints are on that in, yeah. a, in a big way. So. so I'm Jonathan Fields. My guest today has been Scott Dinsmore, the founder of Live Your Legend, signing off for Good Life Project. Mm-hmm.